Good morning. Uh, before I read the scripture, uh, set the stage just a little bit. Uh, Pharisees, uh, Jesus has been talking to people and, and people are getting excited about what Jesus is saying and Pharisees are concerned about that and they've gathered together with Jesus and, and uh, one of the Pharisees who is a lawyer chooses to ask Jesus a question to test him and the question is which of the commandments is the greatest and so our scripture this morning is his response to that. Matthew 22, chapter 37 through 40. He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. God is good all the time. Amen, amen. God is so good to us, even though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. God is with us, and God knows what we are going through and dealing with in our journey. Even though we are stressful and tired, and God will comfort your heart, and God will fill your heart with joy and hope this morning as you listen to the word of God. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for giving us great opportunity to come just the way we are. We acknowledge that you are our refuge and you are our foundation. You are our rock and salvation. God, we do believe that no one and nothing can take us from the love of Christ because you are holding us so tight. And that you are guiding us and leading us, transforming each one of us. God, even we go through a very difficult moment and trial and tribulation. And you are with us in the midst of all the suffering and scars and, and pains as well. God, help us to uh, uh, see what you see. Help us to feel what you feel. Help us to uh, care about what you care about. Help us to fill and help us to do what you do in the midst of us. God, we give you thanks for who you are and who we are in this community. God, give us your ears and eyes to see. And give us your ears to listen to the word of God. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. I heard a voice of God. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, very good. Yeah, you can have welcome to our club, okay? All right, okay? When I accept Christ as my personal Savior, I was very, very curious about God and faith and grace. You know, when I was, uh, when I was, when I was encountering uh, Christ personally, you know, I was fully touched. And I was gradually and continually sanctified and transform inside out. Oh, can you show us the picture when I was a little boy, when I was 13, and then can you show us the picture? Uh, uh, okay, all right. Okay, the, the blue circle, the, 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 he's very skeptical. The little guy is just like, just like this. That's me. And then the, the guy who is wearing a, a white t-shirt, that's the one, that's the one who is coming a couple of weeks later from Dallas. And then he uh, become a really big guy in, in Korea. And the yellow, the, the one who looks like Paul, am I right? That's my brother. My brother and me, and my brother was very, very getting into the Bible. And I was very skeptical. I mean, you know, if God is here, if Jesus is alive, please show yourself so that I can believe. I was just, just like that. But that night, as I listened to the word of God, and then I encountered Christ very personally. Very personally. I mean, I mean it was just like a life-changing moment, and everybody around 
around me was, uh, you know, they were very shocked and they were very surprised. And my life was completely changed and transformed since then, inside out. So I went to Bible studies and then I studied about the gospel, which is the good news. I learned about Christianity, I learned, uh, and, 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 and I made up my mind to be more like Christ. Because, you know, the sanctifying grace is making me more like Christ, loving God and loving others and loving myself. And then I always think about my, I always think about this question, how can I become more, how can I become more like Christ? In the way I, I, I speak, in the way I think, in the way I treat people, in the way I see the world, in the way I uh, uh, act. So I, every time, you know, you feel the same way, I feel sanctifying grace, sustaining and, and molding and, 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 and changing and transforming my uh, whole being. So Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40, loving God and loving others. In other words, truly love God and deeply care for others. I think loving God and loving others is a core foundation of the Bible. I think as you open a Bible, and then loving God and loving others, these two commandments are the foundation of the Bible. And then, and then we don't say Jesus is love. Jesus is love. God has love. We don't say that. God is love. And a loving God and loving others has power to change the world. We as Christians believe that loving God and loving others is a way of living. This is a believer's one-on-one -on -one foundation and instruction from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is for the faithful and good life in every age. It doesn't matter all the young. It doesn't matter healthy, uh, unhealthy. It doesn't matter. You know, all every age. This is, this is for the faithful and good life. In every age. Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 and, and 40. As you open the Bible and read the scripture very carefully. It's a very simple and profound and powerful and spiritual statement. Jesus asked us to do. And it continued to practice in our everyday journey as Christians and as believers. And as a faith community. Since I learned the great commitment Jesus said to all believers, including myself, and that Jesus, was, Jesus who was love came down and stepped into human history and, and, and stepped into the divided world. The life Jesus lived was to always love God and love others. You know, in the 17th century, John Wesley, who was the founder of Methodism, Realized and understood Jesus' teaching and core foundation, the heart of the gospel, very seriously. So Wesley asked all believers to do the three simple rules. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Can, we, can, you, repeat, can you repeat after me? Do no harm. No harm. Do, good. do good. Stay in love with God. So you think about this. What is the best way to love God in our everyday journey? Stay in love. Stay in love with God no matter what. Whatever you do, wherever you, wherever you go, and whatever, whoever you encounter, no matter what, stay in love with God. Even you see uh, uh, cranky and grumpy and mean and angry, even you see your enemy, you stay in love with God. That's the way to love God. Fully and deeply and, and in more detail, truly love God with all your heart and mind and soul. And then what is the best way to love others and care for others deeply? Do no harm. Do good as possibly as you can. That's how you love others as you love yourself and then care for others deeply. So before the last election... Two candidates, you know who they are. Can you show me the uh, PowerPoint? You know who they are. One day my boy Paul was telling me that, Dad, uh, you take Biden, I take Trump. What do you mean? 
Where did you learn that? I don't know. Next day, Paul was telling me, you take Trump and I take Biden. Honey, where did you, how did you know both of them? His answer is, I don't know. So he came to me one day and he, he asked me a question, which one do you think will win the election? What? He said, you take Trump, I take Biden. Honey, where did you, where did you learn that? Who talk, who talk about this? His answer was, I don't know. So, <laughs> Esther and I, we assume that Paul heard about our political language in our home. Probably Esther and I, we watch uh, news and political news. Probably he overheard Trump and Biden in school and in church and among friends. And Esther, I think we had better not use the language of politics at home. I think we are the part of the problem, not part of the solution. The language of politics will impact our boys' future, and they will be deeply influenced by politics in the future. The world in which we live today is deeply divided. We feel that, right? If the church gets, if, if church got caught up in using the language of politics, the church is no longer the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And if we continue to use the language of politics in our journey, we're no longer the light of the world and salt of the earth. The church immediately, do you know what's going to happen? The church immediately becomes powerless. The church immediately becomes the problem of the divided nation. I hope the church will become the solution of the problem. And then even you, you continue to use the language of politics in your work, in your family, in your school, in your community. We become the problem. Do you know what? A lot of people are so disappointed about Christianity and then a lot of people are worried about church and a lot of people, even the believers, young people and believers, they left the church. And they never, never and, and go back to their church and and and. and and, and they become very skeptical and cynical. And then they, they don't care about Christianity. If we as believers of Jesus Christ don't stay in the way of living, do no harm and do good and stay in love with God, we don't have any power to become the solution of the problem. Am I right? Are we on the same page? If we get back to our call, purpose and mission, we have God's power to change the lives of people, change the world, and heal the brokenness in our nation, and mend it, the divided nation. As we think about the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, loving God and loving others, here's my prayer. Let us pray together and cry out to the Lord, God, help us to see what you see. Help us to hear what you hear and help us to feel what you feel and help us to do what you do and help us to care about what you care about in this divided nation. Staying in love with God is a simple practice and doing no harm and, 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 and doing good is a spiritual, profound discipline of changing the world leading people to the kingdom of God, extending God's kingdom as it is in heaven, and healing this divided nation. Do you have any answer to heal this brokenness? I've been thinking about this question. How can I, how can the church heal this brokenness? How can I, how can we as a followers of Jesus Christ, how the church which is the hope of the church. And we are the body of Christ, and church is the head of the Christ. 
How can the church use the power to change the world in divided nation? Been thinking about this question for a long time. Friends, the only way we can revitalize, the only way we can heal, the only way we can reconcile this divided nation is to get back to our call and do our job and use the language of Jesus in our speech, in our action as well. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. My children, listen, church. My church, our love should not be just words and talk. It might be true love which shows itself in action. My church and my children, my beloved one, our love should not be just words and talk. It must be true love which Jesus himself in action. When we continue to use the language of Jesus in our speech and action, the church will be fully vitalized. The church will become the solution of the problem and then we will have God's power to heal and lead and reconcile these divided issues in our nation. Do you know how much you think about this question, how much do you really care for your country? How much do you love your nation? If you really love your nation, you know, I'm, I'm not a citizen of the United States, but I will be. But this is my second home. I deeply care about this nation. I deeply about care I deeply care about the church in our nation this is my prayer oh loving God loving and living God use our church use each one of us and empower each one of us to live a life a way of living to make impossible possible with God's wisdom and power and love so here is a simple rule to follow spiritual practice do no harm do good stay in love with God in your everyday journey this is how we build up legacy in our nation this is how we heal and reconcile brokenness in our nation so may it be amen can we all pray together let us pray Dear Heavenly Father, you know how much we love our nation. You know how much we care about our nation and people in our country. God, give us your wisdom. Give us your power to realize and understand the language of Jesus. God, you have given us a simple rules to follow. Do no harm and do good. Stay in love with God. God, we do believe that you are the one who changed everything, who makes the world upside down. Help us to be more like you in our family, in our community, in school, in work, and whoever we encounter. We are the followers of Jesus Christ. And our church is becoming a real ecclesia in, a, in this community. And we are a genuine followers of Jesus Christ. Not telling other people that we believe in Christ, but showing others love. And they will know who we are by our word and by our action as well. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen, amen, amen. Can we just turn around and simply, simply just say to your church mate, just like this, to the big body and to the community and to the, to the believers, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Can we, can we say so?
Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. Do good. Do no harm. Stay in love with God.